We are here talking with Jeff Weiss, the newly elected uh, president of Washington Hebrew Congregation. Jeff, congratulations. Thank you so much, Ori. Yeah. We've been uh, telling, having a campaign that membership matters. What, in your mind, does that phrase mean? Well, membership matters has so many layers to it and, and so much texture. Um, all the wonderful things we do at Washington Hebrew are for the Jewish community, but the Jewish community is a community of our members. Um, so at the core of it, everything we do is by and for uh, the enhancement of and the betterment of each person, each one of you, to make you better, more fulfilled in your lives and as members. So membership matters, and we um, are a very large community, and one of the great advantages of being a large and diverse community um, is we have the ability to serve everybody's needs, not just one group or one subgroup's needs. Um, and doing that is the essence of what membership matters. So we invite and encourage everyone not only to be a member, to bring their friends, to bring their family, to bring their relatives. Especially in the younger generations, Washington is a place of both tremendous uh, growth, tremendous turnover, tremendous influx of new people into the community. There are 20,000 interns who will be here this summer. A large subset of them are Jewish. We, as the largest Jewish organization in the Mid-Atlantic, have the ability to, and, and, and as through membership, to serve them. And that's just one of the great joys and challenges and opportunities and responsibilities of Washington Hebrew. Tell people a little bit about yourself. You've been, uh, you, you have a long family history here at Washington Hebrew. I do. So now that I'm the 70th president of Washington Hebrew, it happens by an accident of genetics uh, that my great, great, great grandfather, Solomon Pribum, down the hall, uh, was the first president and co-founder of Washington Hebrew. So he and his wife, Carolyn, came to Washington, D.C. from Vienna, Austria, uh, in the middle 1840s. And they settled here and built their businesses here and raised their families here. An interesting thing about them is not only was uh, Solomon an entrepreneur uh, and ran a business um, down, uh, downtown, but his wife, Carolyn, and his daughter, Emma, ran a business. And they ran a, an independent business as women entrepreneurs on Pennsylvania Avenue in the 1850s. So Washington Hebrew was born from entrepreneurship and from men and women both being entrepreneurs and building things in this city. That is amazing, and uh, you know, not only not only that, they were a large part of you know essentially creating uh, the Jewish community here in in D.C. Well, they did, and some of that was an accident in their family, and it all has to do with our organ. So when they founded Washington Hebrew, one of the things that they wanted to do as Reformed Jews was to have an organ as part of the service. And it turns out that when their daughter Emma uh, married Bendiza Berend. Uh, he came from a German Jewish family um, and he didn't like the organ. So in 1869, famously, Bendiza and his then wife, Emma, uh, and a few others spun out of Washington Hebrew and formed Addis Israel because they didn't like the organ, but because everyone was a big community, uh, Solomon Pribum helped donate uh, the first Torah scrolls to uh, Addis. And then, of course, Bendiza built uh, the um, first synagogue for Addis, which is now the Capitol Jewish Museum. So the entirety of the Washington Jewish community revolves around these early family stories, which is not just my personal family story, that was ages before me, but it is Washington's Jewish story, and therefore it's Washington Hebrew, it's all of yours story as well. So for people who weren't at the uh, annual meeting this past weekend, yeah. uh, we this, missed you. Yes, we missed you. Uh, this was a, this is, this is your time to, to give people a little bit of your vision for the future, uh, or at least the next two years of, uh, of Washington Hebrew. So what's fun about answering that question is I've, I've been an active participant at Washington Hebrew for a long time. I've not only been a member for a long time, but I've been on the board and the executive committee for a dozen and a half years. Um, and it's been both a joy and a privilege to do that. This is a place where um, the more you do, the more you get out of it. Um, but for the next uh, two years, and as we focus kind of strategically, I think we should continue things that are recognizable to everybody, but very important to all of them. Number one, we need Washington Hebrew to be and to continue to be a safe place for Jewish community. Um, at this time in history and in this time in our lives, 
um, being Jewish is very important, but having a place for Jews to congregate, to talk, to express their disagreement, but also to express and wonder about what's going on around them is, is very, very important. And Washington Hebrew is that locus, and it is. And, and I, when I mean safe, I mean physically safe, I mean emotionally safe, and I mean intellectually safe. That's very, very important, and, I, and we're going to build on that a lot. Um, the second thing that I think is very important for Washington Hebrew is to continue to be not just a place of lifelong learning, but a place for our youth. Our youth are our future. We've been very successful in working um, on our groups of 2239, of, bring, of, of providing Jewish values and Jewish learning and Jewish gathering for people between the ages of 2239, which are very important. But I'm, I'll emphasize that we'll expand that to 2 to 39, because in fact, we have the Early Childhood Center, we have religious school, we, we, have, we have so many layers of very valuable learning and education that we provide, and education is the future. So as long as we educate in the right way, um, our, 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 our Jewish future will be, uh, will be strong. Um, so we, we need to be a place for all of the future um, and, and do that through education and through gathering and through community. So you run a business that is uh, about sustainability. And uh, that is also one of the hallmarks of what you are looking for for the future of Washington Hebrew. That's a great point. So, so yes, I run a solar energy company and an energy transition company for, for large organizations. And I've been doing that for 15 years. Um, and I led the solar committee, which is part of the reason we have um, solar on our roof here at Macomb Street, uh, which has been very, very valuable to us. But I think sustainability is a great metaphor uh, for the Jewish future. So whether it's through membership or through how we engage in our community, literally from youth um, through our, our lives, uh, we want to have a place, we want Washington Hebrew to be a place where people can engage and connect and explore. Um, and that is a, a form of sustainability, which is, as you point out, very important. Just this past week, we had a fantastic event here on America's Jewish future, and that is another one of your uh, main, main goals for the next couple of years, right? It, it's incredibly important. So literally since our founding and through the last 172 years, Washington Hebrew, as a large Jewish organization in the nation's capital, has been not just a synagogue, but has been a place which provides leadership in Jewish thought and Jewish values. And we do it in, a, in, in, in many ways. And what we did last week was exceptional. Uh, so have, having the uh, program uh, led by um, uh, Mr. Forer and David Gregory uh, on, um, on the future of Judaism and on anti-Semitism, which if you haven't seen it, I recommend you watch the replays is just exceptional. You have a, a fourth idea as well. So underneath all of this, we will build and continue to build Washington Hebrew on pillars of philanthropy. So our members um, are the reason we do all this <clears throat> and doing everything we do and has to be done. And my view is it should only be done in an excellent way. And to do it in an excellent way, we need the best people, we need the best facilities, we need the best programs, we need the best thought. And doing that is not inexpensive. Um, and it never has been. So we need to continue to build and literally rebuild um, that which we have uh, for the future. Jeff, thank you so much uh, for, for taking this time out of your uh, very, very busy uh, day. Uh, mazel tov again. We're, we're excited to see what's happening uh, down the road. Well, I'm thrilled. Thank you so much.